Well, praise the Lord. I'm thankful today. Really thankful. I'd like to look at a word today that's uh, found in the New Testament, and it's called epignosis or epignosis. No matter how you pronounce it, it means knowledge, and uh, it means more like precise knowledge or God's intended knowledge or divine knowledge or knowing that you know knowing upon knowledge and uh, Paul uses it in uh, Philippians 1 9 he says in this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment that's Paul talking and he prays again to the uh, to the Colossians and he says and having put the new man on which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him now that's uh, Colossians 3:10 and Paul's telling about the new man that comes into you when you believe in Jesus Christ and the precise and correct knowledge you know I often think too as the Lord talked to, to Peter, and he says, who, does, who do men say that I am? And Peter jumps up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replies and says, uh, It wasn't flesh and blood that revealed this to you, to you, but it is my Father who's in heaven. And that special knowledge of knowing Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, and through the Word, and through all your associates, you know, who are witnessing to you uh, is more than just knowing. You know, it's more than just knowing. It's knowing that you know. It, this journeying with Jesus, and I really want to do this, uh, is continuing to talk about how we know Jesus. And it is an awakening, something that you come across uh, that the Lord chooses you, He awakens you. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, didn't have too much of a clue, just the fact that he knew that this Jesus had something special. I think it works that way with what is happening now in the Islamic world with people having dreams. People having dreams about Jesus and it sparks some curiosity perhaps to look into the Bible and when you read God's Word what happens is the Holy Spirit rushes in to verify give validity to that word you know so I think it's important that we talk about it because people have all kinds of prescriptions about witnessing to people but I'm thinking more and more that it is a divine revelation that we receive through circumstances or putting ourselves in the path of Christianity or putting ourselves in the influence of Christ. In other words, uh, I tell the inmates in jail that when the guard calls church, church, <laughs> You know, uh, don't resist that. Don't resist it because it's be just another part, another dimension of being in the influence of Jesus Christ and being in the influence of his word and his people. And just as the gates of hell cannot prevail against what Jesus said there in Matthew 16, so it is that the Holy Spirit will have his way in his particular tailor-made visitation of those who do not know the Lord or but yet they do have a curiosity or they do have a will to want to seek out something or be, being responsive I should say to the call or being responsive to that move toward being in the Lord and uh, that's pretty interesting because Isaiah said that his name shall be called Emmanuel or God with us you know and as Jesus later said he said that this himself would be named by the angel Gabriel and Jesus who shall be 
that which will take away the sins of the world. And I'm thinking also particularly in uh, Luke chapter 4 where he goes and opens the Bible there in his hometown synagogue into uh, is Isaiah 61 and reads half of the entire scripture. The first half saying that he will be a deliverer. He will be those that he will be one that binds up the broken hearts, one that sets the captives free, one that brings sight and recovering of sight to the blind. That's half of the picture. And then you go on to read the other part of Isaiah and you see the full epinosis. You see the full awakening of Christ also being one who comes again to bring in or usher in the millennial kingdom. So it's interesting when you take apart some of these words that are in the New Testament. And that's one of the things I'd like to do this week in our session on Wednesday, which is today. And, you know, Jesus has this pattern of delivering, bringing us out. God has that same pattern. He brought Abraham out of his country. Get out of this country. Get into a place I'm going to show you. <sighs> Gets Moses' attention with the burning bush. Moses... <laughs> gets the call to deliver his people out of bondage in Egypt. See, we're being delivered, we're being healed, we're being restored. And you see that in nature. The body itself seeks to restore itself, seeks to heal itself if we treat the body right, if we eat the right foods and stuff. You know, take good care of ourselves. And so it is also in nature. Like I've said before, uh, even the tiny snail has a house protecting him. He has this protection, this deliverance. And if God does this stuff for a tiny snail, and, you know, the, the porcupine has his quills, the cheetah has his speed, the wolf has his teeth, we have this defense in us that will hearken. Get that word. Look that one up. Will hearken to that urge for us to listen to the Word of God and to be sensitive to His precious Holy Spirit. It's one that awakens us, Paul says in Ephesians 2. It awakens us to a new life. And uh, I'll tell you, when you go to the uh, Martin County Jail, you find a lot of broken people. Man, they're broken in half. Yet they don't know where to run to. And the Lord's saying, Run to me, because I have the answers. Well, praise the Lord. I'm thankful this day. It's uh, January 8th, a new year. New, <laughs> new, uh, the yeah, declarations or new promises to the Lord, perhaps. And uh, anyway, God bless you this week. Have a good week. In Jesus' name. Amen.